Hey everyone, we've got a really exciting show for you today. I guarantee you're going to have a blast. So, we're heading to the Motherlode Mine, and the Motherlode Mine is really cool because they had the, probably the largest blast, I'm sure, the largest blast in a mine they ever had in this whole area. Um, they worked this mine for years with these uh, tunnels and stopes, and uh, they decided that they were just, uh, they were getting tired of blasting a little bit of time and cleaning it out and, and mining it, and they decided they were going to drill a monster. Uh, they drilled 4,200 holes, and they put 25 tons of explosives in these holes. Um, 25 tons is like uh, this box here. That's a 50, 50 pound box of explosives. Thousand boxes this size, they filled up in this big, in this, uh, in this big blast that they were doing. And uh, they, they lit the fuse and uh, basically they wrecked the mine. Uh, There's so much overburden that came down, uh, diluted the copper so much that uh, they never made much money at the mine. So it's continued to operate for a few more years. Anyhow, so it's a really cool mine. There's a big, a great big open pit that's uh, where this blast was. And uh, we, uh, they were supposed to have been all sealed off, but we found a way to get down to the 200 level, uh, and there's water below that. It went down to 500 feet below that. Um, so anyway, so, so we're here to talk about explosives. And this here is a rail drill, and this is what they drill the holes in that they do blasting with uh, inside the mine. This is mounted somewhere solid. This thing's pretty heavy. It weighs about 150, 200 pounds. Mount that in solid, put the bit in there, and then you crank this as you drill, and then it goes. the drill goes in, and that's the way. Then you pull it out, put a longer one in, and, uh, and that's how you, how, the, how you drill the face. And then they, they put it up there. Now, I told you before um, that this here was a, um, a blasting cap. And uh, I found out, no, it isn't a blasting cap. What this is actually, it's a replaceable uh, end for a drill. Um, they, they weld that on the end of drill steel, and the hole is not for a fuse. It's actually for water to come up there. So that is not a blasting cap. But we have been able, we were able to locate a blasting cap. And we're going to show you how this works. Um, now, I only have one of these, and I'm not going to tell you where it came from, and it won't be here much longer. But basically, so this is the old stuff that they used. They used to... Um, to, uh, to uh, uh, blow uh, dynamite and stuff up before they started using electricity. Electricity became common because then they could time the charges. So you would, um, you would time, you would put a, a, a drill a bunch of holes, time the charges, and then it would be like a wave that, the explosions would be like a wave. They, they'd light it and it would go and it was far more effective than just a big bang. This, uh, you know, you could only stick it in one stick, right, or a group of, of dynamite, and then it would just blow up that one and it wasn't timed. You could light a bunch, but you know, so it wasn't very sophisticated. So this was kind of the old, older style. The big advantage to this is you can use this underwater. There's nothing here, I'll show you. There's nothing you can do to put this guy out. I'm not gonna try to put it out, but. Um, so basically the way it works is just take the end off of here and then, uh, and then you light it. And uh, away it goes. So, so now the advantage to this is it's, um, there's nothing, you don't really see nothing, you don't even see where it is. It just burns inside here, and it's uh, it's very precise. It takes exactly three minutes. <laughs> it's going to be pretty smoky in here. Well, i got three minutes, I know, before it goes off, and don't worry, I'll throw it outside before it goes up. But see, it starts to burn down, and there's nothing you can do to put this thing out other than just cutting it, or you can pull it out of the stick of dynamite. So it doesn't go off until it goes to the very end. So um, we're, we're really going to stink up the shop here. So we're just going to throw this outside, and then we'll film... The blasted cap and it goes off. It's just like a big firecracker, basically. So as you can see, the smoke is getting closer to the end there. Probably got about 30 seconds left and it'll go off. And the three minutes seems like a long time when you're waiting for something to blow up. So not real close to it. It's not really very, uh, very hazardous. It does it puts pressure and stuff on the dynamite, and that's what sets. <laughs>
We're here at the Motherlode Mine. As you can see, it's a pretty large uh, pit here. It was actually pretty much a town here. A railway came here, and it was a pretty profitable mine. And we've got an awesome mine here to explore. Um, there's all the remains of the of the concentrator compressors and all that kind of stuff. The foundations of it, and uh, we've got quite a bit of stuff to explore. And all right, just a quick uh, few little clips. We're flying over the Motherlode Mine here. This is actually the tailings pond here. As we're coming up the mine here, we're following the mine, and the mine is that great big uh, pit. Uh, from the floor of the pit, the mine went down another 500 feet, but uh, you can only get down 200 feet. So there's a guy there, he's got a little scrapyard there, he lives right beside it, but um, he's got no problem with it being there, it's crown land. So back over the pit there, and we're heading back towards the tailing pond, and we'll make another pass or two real quick there. It's hard to get good shot when you're flying over 100 miles an hour. If you fly too high, you can't see nothing. If you fly too low, you're going too fast. So. Need a helicopter. There's the pit again, and uh, we'll come back around to the tailings pond here, and uh, one more little shot over the pit here. It's a pretty big hole. Uh, it's not a good time of day to fly over it because it's a big shadow there, but it uh, yeah, gives you kind of a rough idea just how big it is. It's a pretty fair size hole. So now we're coming over to Greenwood. Here we're just going over the. This is where the Greenwood smelter is. Actually, where all this material went, just uh, about five miles to the south there. And uh, there's called Hell's Bells, or huge bells on top of their castings of slag there. And you see the great big uh, stack there that uh, you see when you go green with there. There's the stack right there. So We're looking at just all kinds of different types of rock. You know, some of it's pretty mineralized. Other that looks like more like a calcites here. And like I said, I'm not no geologist or nothing. And, but uh, just kind of show you some of the... Some of the different formations here. Heard of some sulfides there, and you see there's a big shear. There we can see some probably pyrites, I guess, eh? Kind of a pretty goldish colored material. Usually, you know, pyrites are kind of associated with this type of rock. There you can see this was definitely blasting. You can see the drill hole there. So, lots of different levels and we're making our way up the pit up to this one at it here we're gonna go inside and have a look but yeah pretty big open pit you can see our our vehicle way down that's the way we came and a fair bit of loose rock here obviously there's some some hazards associated with rock falling on you and if that's some kind of a fossil interesting pattern there we walked around the very bottom of the pit here so um, there doesn't seem to be any at it, so we can find at the top. So it looks like there's a few holes at the bottom we can check out. There's one there, and another one at the end there, so we'll have a look at those. But as far as the, the open pit portion here, there's no at it, so we can see anywhere around this side. Here's another shot of the pit there. You can just see all this pretty colorful material here. Lots of, uh, lots of pyrites in there. It looks like gold, but obviously it isn't otherwise. Uh, they'd be mining it. Well, that's, uh... Interesting, I don't know what it, what it is. Kind of a, a gate it almost looks like. Haven't seen that before. They blocked this uh, added off, but it wasn't too much of a problem to crawl under it. So uh, there's a, an ore chute here. Look at the size of the timber on that ore chute. Here's another part of that. Kind of interesting. That looks like a real old rail car to me, an old mine car. Kind of a hook, maybe there's an axle went through those big metal rings there. So stick it over there. Right hand tradition. Yeah, lots of branches in here, eh? Right? So, right, so some of these seem to be kind of blocked off. Huh. Big ore shoot there, eh? Our LED light on our camera. Alright. So, a fair bit of air coming up through here. So there's a raise. See where all this air is coming from. It's coming from down there, but. Could be wrong. Huh. 
Oh, not coming from down there. Hmm. Coming from up here. I don't think we're going to get very far up there, unfortunately. Continue on down the main branch and see what we can find. Might not have uh, too much to explore here. But you never know until you go. Quite a few different branches here though. Let's go this way, Max. I don't know if we're going to be able to find our way through here very far. It's a pretty consistent colored rock here. We sort of are a serpentinite, sort of mixed in with some copper in here. Oh, there's a, a raised, there's just massive war shoots in here. Look how skookum that is. Not looking very promising here though. That looks like it's pretty much all caved in. Yeah. And they didn't do a whole bunch of damage to those stumps. They probably would have continued mining this. But uh, since they shut it down, I think maybe they just wrecked everything. Which might be like too bad for us. So it really looks like the story was here. Uh, Man's greed's got the better of them. They had a nice little mine here and they screwed it up. <laughs> okay, so yeah, here's another collapse to ore chute. And here is the last collapsed ore chute. So yeah. Looks like they just basically wrecked this whole mine. Unfortunately, so. There's nothing for us to explore. I have no idea why they would have gone through all the trouble to put a big fence in there. I mean, there's nothing really in here to dangerous or anything. So that's what's uh, at the mother load mine that we could find so far. Those look like a bunch of uh, a tamping sticks. Some for tamping dynamite. Yes. I'm really impressed by these uh, loadout shoots. I've never seen loadout shoots that were Built that skookum. Awesome. <laughs> Look at the heck of a job on them. Those stoked out areas must have been really cool. Yeah, so if you're curious as to what's in behind uh, this gated up area, well, let me just tell you, hardly worth the effort of crawling under it. As you can see from the underground, uh, so they had all these uh, tunnels and they were following these ore uh, veins that were pretty rich, and you can see. Maybe that one goes in a little bit further. There's one a little higher. But all these stoped out areas have all collapsed. And we haven't found any place where we can actually get anywhere. Here's another shot at some of this uh, mineralization along the edge of the pit. So as you can see, there's you know, a fair bit of copper in there, eh? You know, obviously not enough uh, to be worth mining, but uh, looks good to me. But what do I know, right? So. <laughs> The main shaft goes straight down 500 feet, and I've heard from uh, somebody that uh, it was actually cemented off. So we're going to see if we can find that. So this is certainly going to be interesting. This is something that we're going to need our rope gear for, and we can head straight down there and check this out. So our adventure has kind of begun here. We have all our gear on. We're heading down this shaft. So uh, my light fell off and it fell down that hole. Uh, not really too much of a problem because obviously I have uh, backup lights and lights on my camera. So we're gonna continue on down this shaft. All right, so we were able to climb down this first part of this. It, you know, it's not really treacherous. Eh? That first part was pretty steep, but you know, nothing really nasty, but it, yeah, it's all good because eh? it's given us a chance to, uh, to use our safety gear and, and practice this SRT stuff. But I uh, don't think we really need it from this point down. It doesn't look really be that steep. So we're just going to unhook there, and we have uh, you know three different three different uh, ways we can go here. So looks like a big stoked area. Well, like I said, this uh, this mine went down to the 500 level, so it goes down a long ways. And uh, this is going to be 
some of the real historic mother load stuff that not many people ever get to see. So that's a challenge you always have when you get under these things to try to light them. So this was really a big mine. I mean, this this mine fed the the smelter at Greenwood for most of the time that it was operating. Wow. Well, who would have thought that little hole? You know, they just barely squeeze through. It would allow you to get into this big, huge area here. Huh? Well, we've certainly found the keys to the to the mine here. We're just going to walk along here and show you some of the stuff here. There's a drill stuck in there. No, not really that tif difficult to get in here. Definitely need the you know ropes to get down. That first part's pretty steep, but you know down in here is not really that bad to walk around in here. You know, there's some sulfides in here. Wow. That's probably the 200 level, so we're probably looking at 300 feet. I bet you there's about 300 feet of mine underneath that. You know, it's pretty stable. It's not like caved in that much. Oh, there's a rope there. That rope doesn't look too ancient, but it's always hard to tell stuff underground. I mean, it's not exposed to the effects of the sun and stuff, so. It just doesn't get uh, fairly dry in here, you know, it's not too bad. Let's see where that rope goes. Huh. Wow, this is just really definitely worthwhile to come in here. Oh, it's just, the rope's just hooked to a little anchor, I guess people are... I can walk up here no problem with camera in my hands. down here. Let's just see. It's a loose rock here, but it's not too bad of an angle. A worse than walking up a, a steep slope on the outside. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah, it almost seems like in the pit that they Either the big blast sealed off a bunch of these stopes going down or they just decided to try to block it off. Yeah. I'm not going to get anywhere going up here. I'm surprised how warm it is down here. You know, some mines we went in really cold. Here in a, in a t shirt just walking around here. There's plenty of warm. Oh, yeah. well, there's another level going down. Yeah, that doesn't look too steep. I can get up there. Yeah, so it wasn't that difficult for climbing down there. I'm sure I can get back up. You know, we're heading into another slope, I guess. Now, at this point, I'm just totally confused. You know, this wasn't a really crazy rich copper mine. It doesn't go down any further because we're going to run into the water. So this is just another stope. I think we're just right below the pit here, really. So this would be the 200 level. But uh, you know, that's all that we'll be able to see. I don't think there's been a whole pile of people in here. Probably all this loose rock got broke off from the big blast. Maybe I don't think they mined this this area after the big blast and doesn't look like it to me anyways be kind of curious to see if we could find them the main shaft the mother load shaft that I heard was uh, was uh, cemented off whether that true or not I don't know always confusing being underground there it's easy to lose your bearings. Oh. There we are, that's, that's blocked right off there. So. Stope has just got one big massive pillar in the very middle holding it all up. So when they're talking about wanting to mine some pillars, that's what they were talking about. They definitely would want to grab the ore. I kind of felt bad about having to leave that behind, but they knew damn well if they uh, 
they did this whole thing and just collapse. Eh? Guys are pretty smart. They understood physics and geology. Pretty interesting the way they've done that. It's like this whole bunch of arches, which is pretty strong, right? If you look around the top of this whole thing, it's just like a whole bunch of arches. They had a rope there, and it seemed to be in really good shape, so I thought I'd take advantage of this rope and take a trip down to the down this orange chute. This whole bunch of rope seemed to be in pretty good shape. And uh, show you where we are. 200 level, I guess. I see no railway tracks under there, nothing. But sorry, I'm not planning on any cave tubing adventure down here. <laughs> Doesn't look like there's going much headroom there. I wouldn't get very far. It would be too much work to try to climb down there. Well, this is probably built back at, around the turn of the century, maybe 120 years ago. And then they used it for a lot of years to put a lot of ore down here. Keep the structure green. Happy. Yeah. See, we're kind of really limited as to where we can go because the water's just below us. So all we can do is move along here laterally. Oh, there's some interesting material, eh? Ooh. Doesn't that look like lead and silver? That's silver. Pretty shiny looking stuff. There you go, a little bit more light there, so yeah, this looks like silver and Silver to me. There may be aluminum ladder. That is so. Well, aluminum should be safe, right? Oh, there's a rat. He's not gonna come bite us, is he? No, looks like he's running away. Good rat. We can pick our way up there. There's a ladder going up a, a big steep hole. Gonna make our way up this sulfide smoke here. Okay. Not really finding much for interesting artifacts here, but certainly interesting uh, looking mine. Huh. Here we are, there's a bucket. Rope on it. Uh -huh. There's another little rat hole that's plugged off. There's some pretty red looking material here. Yeah, I'm surprised how warm it is in here. You know, very large area and it's not open to the outside. You wonder why it'd be so so warm. You know, it's not like really deep or nothing. Oh, there's a, a tamping stick. Your dynamite. Oh, that's a shovel. Yeah, not a damping stick at all. It's a shovel. Yeah, let's have a climb up that aluminum ladder there. Looks like a good solid ladder. Yeah. Even if a guy did fall down, just probably fall into that loose rock. Wouldn't be too big of a deal. It is aluminum, right? Yep. It's a pretty old ladder though, it's not like that type you see these days. <laughs> Probably better, a lot better made than the ones you see these days. Well, aluminum doesn't rust or corrode, so that's always the big advantage of aluminum. So I'm not really worried about it. And then put my camera down. Oh, well, that's a pretty good, not good, pretty old ladder. <laughs> Bet you anything it says pull. <laughs> Wonder what they've done with the thousand explosive boxes they used to blast the big hole here. Huh. So it's not in pristine condition, but yeah. Kind of wrecking it by picking it up. <laughs> well, kind of. <laughs> Not kind of reckon it. Yeah. Well, that looks more like a kind of a silver stuff, eh? 
Let me see what's down in this hole here. Oh, there's just stagnant in here. Eh? Not that it's a problem. The oxygen motor's happy, so. Mm. Mm. Oh, here's our 200 level, I suppose, eh? Pretty grimy down in there, though. Eh? I'm thinking I should take that. I don't know how old that would be. I didn't know. Yeah, so just a little raise they started, and then it battened. There's some wedges. Yeah, that's a, I'm just looking for things to add to my collections, eh? Alright, that's pretty black stuff, though, eh? I don't know why it's so black. Some kind of mineral, I guess, eh? Bicycles in here. They look crumbly. That's argillite. Argillite. Yeah, there's a bit of a seam there. You know, I'd really like to see that shaft. Be really exciting if we could find mother load shaft. We're gonna be able to, but we'll try. Maybe not connected to the 200 level. Or whatever level we're at. So we left our bottle up the top here. <laughs> Continue down this other ore pass. And I'm not really sure why. I really know that we can't go in there. We're in the water here, but we just can't help us over there, don't we? Never know we could pull it. Doesn't look too steep. Looks a little slippery here, huh? There we go. Oh yeah, so there's another block, another more shoot. Anything in there interesting? Not really. Yeah, yeah, just another ore shoot there. I've seen quite a few of them in here. I'm just kind of have a look at this wall here. So we're standing on a ridge between about three passes going down. All kinds of directions. No, oh, this this mine looks really stable under here to me. I don't see any kind of issues that I'd worry about. This this is a little stake, and what they do is they kind of mapping these out, and they're doing some prospection or surveying in here. Tie your hip chain onto there. Yeah, you get so turned around, it's hard to tell where you've been sometimes. Yeah, it looks like somebody forgot their lights the last time they were in here. I don't think it was any. Time recently. <laughs> sure looks like my rope in on it. <laughs> so there's my pack. There we go. So you know, we just have to climb back up there and we're done. Yeah, so we made her back up to the top there, so it wasn't a really nasty uh, drop down there, but uh, you know some good SRT practice. Practice on them single ropes and you know, it wasn't straight up and down, but um, yeah, it was really good to have the ropes, definitely pretty safe and no issues at all. Really enjoyed the trip.